Hi, this is Fred with Quality One Engravers. I'm going to try and do a couple things in this video, and one is uh, when you need to digitize something that's real easy, and to do a fill pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is file import, and I know I put in this temp directory a junk, J-U-N-K, junk JPEG. There it is, and import. Just drag it on the screen, or just click it. Uh, I know this is on a 12 by 12 plate. Hit F7 to zoom in. This was just a screen capture I'm doing. I have here, but if I really wanted to do this right, <clears throat> I would have taken this into Photoshop and made these lines a lighter gray, so you could see the line that I'm putting on here. So I'm going to get the digitizing tool here. I'm click in the corner. And I connected it by, by being quite close and now I'm going to use right mouse click and this disconnect so that when I click here it's not going to be a continuation and of course these points you could do very quickly and then zoom in and edit so I might as well show you that so I'll just do this as quick as I can and click here now if you if it did in fact close the shape then when you start something new and let's say that's the <coughs> excuse me the only five points you want when you go to click away it draws a line so you, as soon as you go over you have to click here and this allows you to start a new line so you move away right mouse click click this open contour and you can keep going now uh, this will be seen all these items if I click just this is now it's they're a, a path so I need to go to a range and break path because obviously I don't want this and now I want to zoom in at maybe spots that I didn't hit the logo real well click here get my pointer and now I can move this point to exactly points that I want to match up this is real handy when you're doing something like a signature and you're trying to, to move it around exactly and apply and then I'm going to click on this and delete the bitmap behind it so this looks pretty good now if I select this and I go to let me just see is it see this is a its own entity and this is its own entity so if I select this and go to engrave create toolpath fill and 50 cutter okay you can see it filled both of them so that's not the the effect that I want so the, the way around that is you have to turn this into a path I know it's control H but under a range it's make path so you can also see it if you hit alt s which is show fill so if you go down here alt s is show fill so alt s show fill and now now when I select this and go to engrave create tool path and fill now on this I know it needed to be a little bigger so let's make it an 80 I'm going to select a 80 color just so I know what it is and I say OK so that's so there's my logo ready to engrave but let's say that I wanted the word danger in here so the first thing I'm going to do is I know it's controlled J to break the path and it's somewhere under here break path is control J the if you can learn your hotkeys all the better um, because oftentimes the layout here is very difficult to find what you're really looking for so I'm going to type in danger and then I'm going to hold the shift key and arrow back through and I'm not going to use my normal block font obviously I'm going to use here's Arial so now this is what I want to engrave and I can also hold the shift key alt K and I can center it on the last item selected so this is now what I want to engrave I'm going to move this up a little bit so again if I go to engrave, if I go to engrave this, we'll get a couple of errors here. Create fill, 
and if I say OK, you can see it doesn't fill the way I want. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go Arrange and Make Path. And it says, OK, I have to take my text and turn it to graphics. So I click here, and I know under Arrange is text to graphic. Why it's Alt-B for their assigned hotkey, I'm not sure. But anyways, now, again, I have to hit Control-H and go Engrave, Create Toolpath, and Fill. And OK. OK, now I can see, because I've added this small lettering in here that I want to go around, if I go Alt-N, it will show me what my tool diameter will be. So I, you can see in the center of the G, this looks pretty bad. The, the rounding of the letters doesn't look too good. Also, whenever you do this, it's probably even better to make the font that you use be a, be a bold font. So I'm going to, I can do one or two things. I can try to select it, Control Alt E to edit. And of course, it can no longer be this 80 cutter that worked well with just the lightning bolt. We're probably going to be around a 40 cutter. And it's just a good idea to, to change your, your color here to 40 and say OK. And now let's go ahead and look around this, the lettering. And this looks a little bit better, but not totally great. Let me turn off uh, Alt S. No, not Alt S. View. It's Alt N. Alt N to turn off my. So probably I need to go down just one more time. So I'm going to click here, Control Alt E, and change it from 40 down to a 30 cutter which I know will do it but it will also be a lot of work a lot of engraving time but it will look good um, I always like the cut inline last uh, you can set your depth or whatever depth that you want uh, keep in mind the shape of the tool is a conical tool so so the more you go in depth here the further the tool moves away from whatever it's cutting into uh, I happen to like uh, the sweep tool down, and 30% is usually a good number for overlap. So this is what it's going to look like, and you can see the amount of tool paths that it's now taking. And if you go Alt N, so you see your what it's going to finally look like. This looks okay, a little bit objectionable, but not too bad. It at least has not changed the shape of the letter, and we already know that the shapes up here are going to be no problem the only it's just your interior angles will have a little bit of rounding to it so I turn off alt n f8 and basically that's how you do it hope you enjoyed it